so hello guys what's up and welcome back to my youtube channel it's me your girl barista neze and this is nezeville long time no see guys happy new month new month old me i haven't posted here in a while yes but it's a good time to inform you guys that whenever i take a break here be sure that there's plenty of content going on on my personal channel so many of you here do not even know that i have a personal channel you haven't experienced me up close and personally <laughs> what are you waiting for don't you want to know the real personality behind your nezerville <laughs> so i have a personal channel where i detail my personal life my family marriage children mother parenting relocation everything about me and it's called neza pepper rempe so if you're not subscribed there you are dulling you are sleeping on a bike i'm going to leave the link down below click it and be a fam there as well so you can be a villain and a pepper rempian <laughs> A pepper lover. <laughs> so before I go on with this video, I want to acknowledge the fact that during the course of doing what I do, I may offend some people. So I want to seize this opportunity to address the people that I may have offended knowingly or unknowingly in the last months. If I have crossed you in any way, if what I had said made you feel bad, please from the bottom of my heart and in all sincerity i want to ask you to prepare your mind for more shiggy <laughs> prepare your mind for woto woto pro max because there is so much more coming your way i love you so much <laughs> Wofai Egu Ewa, popularly known as Wofai Father, is a popular Nigerian comedian, TV presenter, actress, model, influencer, and entrepreneur. The 34 year old media personality was born on the 11th of May 1990. She was born in Cross River State and is the third child in a family of seven. So she sits at the middle, having two older siblings and two younger ones. She is a graduate of theater arts from the University of Calabar. Wofai can be credited to be one of the pace setters in the skit making industry, an industry that has now grown and metamorphosed to a multi-billionaire field and has empowered a multitude of youths in Nigeria and even across Africa. Driven by sheer passion, Wofai had begun creating skits in 2014 and in 2015, she bagged the major hosting gig anchoring the MTN Lovers Ball. Success can be said to have come very fast and easy for Wofai as she grew in leaps and bounds with every passing year. The very next year in 2016, she was a presenter for an Ebony Life program where she anchored alongside Chi Girl and Ima Oh My God. That very year, she won the National Comedy Awards and the award for the the best stand-up comedian of the year. Wofai knew that she had great potential in entertainment and she did not hesitate for a second to explore it. She delved into acting and has featured in several movies, including The Wedding Party Part 2, Blood Sisters, The Perfect Arrangement, and even popular TV series, My Flatmates. In 2018, she launched her own restaurant in Lekki, Lagos. Guys, Wofai is undoubtedly a very successful and very industrious lady and we were so pleased to see her take the world by storm. Well, just like many women of Wofai's age in Nigeria, especially one who is successful as her, it wasn't so long before the murmurs and the whispers started going around asking, what next? Who is the lucky guy? When is it happening? We want to come and eat jello fries. And just as many had hoped for and prayed for, a few days ago, Wufai took to her Instagram to make the big announcement. She said, I found my happily ever after. And I said, yes, chai. Love is sweet, oh. And then she put a cute smiley emoji. She then went ahead to share pictures and videos of herself with this dark chocolatey mystery guy and when we saw these pictures and videos we were just about to get excited but we pinched ourselves and said wait Wofai why can't we see the guy's face 
<laughs> what are you hiding? Are you thinking what I am thinking? Come! <laughs> These entertainment girls, you know that we don't have power for you people. Is this somebody's husband once again? And then we started scrolling. We scrolled up, we scrolled down, we scrolled left, we scrolled right. And alas, we saw his face. <sighs> With a sigh of relief, it was a young guy. Not fairly used, not neatly used, not UK used. Straight from manufacturer, neither stolen nor snatched. And we were like, ah, you scared us, my sister Ujare. He is all yours. Enjoy yourself. We wish you a blissful marriage. And so we started contacting our tailors to start sewing our shebi so we can start getting ready for the big day. And as the old Bioma was taking our measurements, we opened Instagram and got a notification from Wafai's in-laws. Oh, it must be an official wedding invitation or some announcement of some sort. So we opened the message and read and it said it had the letter headed paper the cole family and its heading was wedding of taiwo or lakiton cole that is the guy that wufai is engaged to let us get to the contents of the letter images and videos come to our attention showing our son taiwo getting married to wufai ewa in a traditional ceremony in ugep cross river state this serves to notify all acquaintances, family and friends that the Cole family of Victoria Island in Lagos are not aware of any marriage ceremony of our son, Taiwo or Lakita Cole. Neither did we grant any permission nor support in this regard. <laughs> as such, persons parading themselves as new members of the Cole heritage by virtue of this purported event are not known nor accepted by the family. This is serious. All publications and documents being circulated about this are to be disregarded. Signed by Engineer Kunle Cole for the family. <coughs> Catastrophe cataclysm. Pandemic pandemonium. Epidemic pandemic. Pandemonium catastrophe. Cataclysm. When we saw this letter, this publication, we caught cold instantly. A chill ran from the top of our spine down to the bottom. We were cold. Because yes, we have seen incidences where families or members of a family do not support Support the choice of a spouse that their child has made, but never in our lifetime have we seen a full publication, a letter distancing themselves in this manner. We have never seen such disapproval to go so deep to the extent of issuing a public disclaimer and saying that the lady parading herself as a new member of the family is not known or recognized by the family. This is way beyond disapproval. This is loot. This is hate. This is scorn. This is pure disdain. So people wondered how any woman in her right mind with all the stories that have been flagging about will open her koro koro eyes in 2024 and enter a family where you are grossly abhorred. A family that has made no effort to conceal their disdain for you. They have privately shown you and they have publicly announced it. How can you see all of these glaring signs and you jump into the marriage and you say let love lead? Do you think love is the only thing that can sustain a marriage? Especially an African marriage? They were like, what should we call this? Is this ignorance? Is this love? Is this desperation? What do we call this very risky move that Wufai has chosen to make? Now let me tell you. Marriage in Nigeria, I do not know about other African countries, but I can talk about my country. Marriage in Nigeria is very different. In practice, in practicality, live law, I am talking to you as a human being and as a married woman. Marriage in Nigeria is very different from marriage in the Western world. I know that our laws, our statutes, the Matrimonial Courses Act, says that marriage is a union between a man and a woman but in reality a Nigerian marriage is a union between two families make no mistakes about that and that is why during the 
core of the marriage, the wedding ceremony. Both bride and groom can choose to be absent. The bride would be in her room. In fact, she's not even permitted to be part of that ceremony. The bride price paying, which is the core of a marriage in Nigeria. She would be in her room fondling her phone. Her husband may or may not be present. He might be in Spain, Malay, Japan, and his family would come with his kinsmen and go to the lady's family and there will solidify the union and create a marriage even in the absence of the parties involved and they would call them and say congratulations you have been married and that marriage is valid and subsistent in the eyes of the law that is a nigerian marriage it is a union between two families little wonder in the Igbo culture you would see a woman bow down in respect to her husband's elder brother and address him as my husband because she is not just married to the man who she said i do to she is married to the family and that is why in the yoruba culture you will see a woman who is having challenges with her husband and they are separated but she's still attending the family functions she's still retaining the family name even when she's keeping malice with the man that she married oh yes a marriage in nigeria transcends way beyond a man and a woman it is a union and a relationship between two families <laughs> it is nothing like the western marriage where a man and a woman can even marry without their parents consent and announce it over dinner dad john and i got married when we were at brazil when we were on vacation and the parents were like oh my god congratulations <laughs> fiction not with us another integral part of a nigerian marriage which is very important and holds a lot of significance is the parental blessing traditionally before the westerners introduced us to their religion a man and a woman's parents are known as his chi on earth his god and everything we ask our heavenly father to provide in his heavenly capacity our earthly parents typically provided for us in their earthly capacity life they physically gave us life provision protection growing up it was their responsibility so their endorsement and their blessings is a very integral part of a nigerian marriage it is deeply considered material to either the success or the failure of that marriage and believe you me in my experience many marriages that lack that parental consent and blessing many of those marriages do not stand the test of time end up crashing in the long run so here we have wofi and a husband madly in love and there we have the boy's family not only disapproving of the marriage but completely distancing themselves from that union and saying that to them such marriage does not even exist so the question becomes is wofi right is she making a good decision to go into that marriage and go into that family when they have openly and publicly shown their disdain? I personally may understand the reasons or the logic behind Wofai's decision to proceed. First, age. At almost 35, she's not the youngest bride in the room. She's not that 21-year-old girl that will say, oh, if this one goes, there is still enough time for the next one to come. So she may say to herself, after all of these years of praying and hoping and asking God to send me a man that would love me and respect me and cherish me I finally find him and you are telling me to let him go and start all over again just because of his family no I will do no such thing secondly she may underestimate the importance or the consequences of marrying into a family that hates you. She may believe, due to lack of experience, that it is something that can be handled. After all, I'll be on my own, I'll be in my house. I'm not seeing them, I won't go to them, they won't come to me. Everybody would stay on their own. She possibly have underestimated how these kinds of situations play out. Thirdly, she is said to be pregnant and for her, there is no going back. She's already pregnant for this guy. So whatever it is, we go rough up. So in today's video, I seldomly do, but I will be giving my opinion. And I will be talking to Wofai and several other women that are in this similar situation. There are so many women that are in between crossroads wondering, should I go ahead with this marriage with this man? His mother hates me. His father does not want to see me. His siblings do not like me. Should I go ahead? Is my love for this man and his love for me enough to sustain this marriage? Is it worth it? I will be addressing Wofai as well as other women in this situation. Men, don't be offended. It's not like 
like I mean to keep you at the back burner, but practically, we would admit that it's a lot more challenging when the hatred is from the man's part. For a man is pretty straightforward. The only challenges or bottlenecks that he might encounter is during the wedding period, paying the bride price and making the arrangements. Once all of that is over, he would take his wife to her home. She would bear his name. She would visit his own village. The products of their marriage is his. Nobody will contest her properties when she passes. So it's pretty much more straightforward for the men than the women. But I still believe that everybody would have something to take from this. So as I give my opinion, please drop in the comments section. If you have been in this situation, drop your experiences. Is it worth it? Do you regret it? How did it end for you? Did the family come around? Drop your experiences down in the comment section. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up and drop all your feelings down below. Let us proceed. So whether Wofai or any other woman in this situation should proceed or not, of course, is within your prerogative. You're an adult. It's your choice. But my advice, do not proceed if one, it is a mommy's boy. <laughs> Daddy's boy. Mwah, mommy. Mommy said. Mommy said. Mommy said. If it is a man who is overtly dependent on his family, either emotionally or financially, who has a very, very close knit with this his family. You know that some men, it's not like they don't love their family, but they don't have that mushy mushy relationship with them. Such men, it might be easier to take this gamble with. But you see those men that are overtly close to their family, where you would constantly fight between the decision that mommy made and the one that you made with your husband. My sister, you will suffer. If you get married to a man who is a mommy's boy and is not strong-willed and has a mind of his own, a man who gets a lot of influence from his family, who his mother would say jump and he would ask how high. If you have that kind of man, I'm not saying it's bad though, everybody knows what they can deal with. But in this situation, it would be a torture for you because he's not going to put you first. There would always be that rift of mommy said and mommy is coming and mommy is doing this and mommy prefers it that way. And when that mommy hates you, welcome to hell. Two, do not get married to a family that loathes you if you are not ready for conflicts and fights and battles and disagreements if you're not ready for drama and when i say ready i mean both physically ready and spiritually ready if you open your two kurokuro eyes and enter a family where they have disowned you even before entering you should be ready for what comes with it so the question is what is your strength what is your threshold are you ready if you don't have power if you're like me, that don't have power to be waking up by 2 a.m. for midnight prayers and fighting sister-in-law and brother-in-law, keeping malice and mother-in-law problem, if you are not that kind of person, if you are not that kind of person that can battle, step aside because there will be plenty of conflicts. It's not avoidable. You see, if you're abroad, maybe you are living far away in Germany with your husband, you guys don't visit often, you are just on your own abroad, just minding your business. Nobody is coming into your house, nobody, no family function is happening. You are just on your own, hidden in that corner. It may be tolerable, but believe you me when I tell you that the Nigerian culture is very dynamic. If you're living in Nigeria with that man, be ready for bass opus. If you don't see the signs, you will feel the wonder. I'm talking about a culture where you are going to face inheritance battles. A culture that even if you live with a man for 40 years and you have 10 children for him and he's sick, you nursed him, you packed his poop and he eventually passes, you have no right to bury your husband. The burial has to be by your husband's family. There are plenty of cultures that can put you in a precarious position when you are married into a family that despises you. So if you're ready, once again, let me repeat it. If you're ready for physical, mental and spiritual conflicts and battles, then you may proceed. But if you do not have the mind for that, it's advisable that you don't. Three, be prepared for no extended family relationship. If you have made up your mind to go into this kind of marriage, you should zero your mind that that relationship that you and your children should have with your husband's people may be non-existent. And believe me, that relationship is very important to both your mental well-being. You may feel, oh, I don't care. I don't mind. Even if nobody likes me, every human being desires to be accepted. Talk more of in a family where you bear their name and every day of your life, you deal with lack of acceptance. It is killing. 
And the funny thing about it is that some people believe that when you have children, don't worry, they'll come around. After one child, you drop two, you drop three, they will eventually love their grandchild. It doesn't play out that way all the time. There are some grandparents, some in-laws that detested you from the beginning and you felt like having a football field of children would change their mind. They would still hate you and hate all your children. Sometimes those feelings don't go. So if you are ready to have no relationship with your husband's people, me, myself and I, us against the world, all I need in this life of sin is me and my boyfriend. If that is the kind of relationship you want, if that is the kind of family value system you have coming from where you are coming from, it might be tolerable for you. But if you are that kind of person that comes from a rich family extended value system, where you go to your cousin's house, your father's brothers, they come for meeting, they, you attend weddings together, you will find yourself very miserable because that vacuum would always eat you up. Four, a man who is incapable of standing up for you and shielding you like an armor does. <laughs> oh my God. If women that are in these kinds of situations open their mouths and tell you their stories, you will not venture into this kind of risk. You are a pride. You are supposed to be like, that is why during traditional weddings, you hear your in-laws say, we found a flower. We found a precious stone. We found a diamond in your compound and we have come to pluck it. You're supposed to be like the prize. Your heroes are supposed to worship you. They're supposed to love you because you are leaving everything. You are sacrificing everything. Your name, what you're used to, your family, sometimes your degree, your education, your body, your health, your life. You are sacrificing so much to come and take their son and grow with him and make a successful man of him. Oh yes, they are supposed to treasure you like, like pearls. In this case, they are publicly denouncing you. They see you as a stain. I do not know whether it's because of the age difference. Some people say that Wofai is a lot older. In fact, there's a voice note that has leaked where the man's father was purportedly saying that his son is a lot younger than this woman. All these are Garacha ladies that would flex around and jump around and when they are getting old, they will look for one small boy to, to hook. I do not know whether the age is the problem. I do not know whether it's her lifestyle or her choice of career. Some families not like any woman in entertainment. Any woman that wears pants on Instagram. No, 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 no. They just want what they term a decent, quiet <laughs> girl, banker, lawyer for their son. They do not want any spotlight or any paparazzi for their son. I do not know what the reason is, but they do not want the union. If you do not have a man that is strong-willed, or Dogu in the real name, <laughs> a man that can shield you from forces and principalities and powers, a man that can look at his brother in the eyes and say, before you get to my wife, you would have to go through me. A man that can tell his father, daddy, do not talk to my wife like that. I do not like it. It is not acceptable by me. A man that can tell his mother, no, mommy, my wife and I have agreed that this is what we are going to do. And that is what it's going to be. If you have a feeble, I do not want to use the word a weak man because it's not weakness. Sometimes it can be by virtue of his nature. It's not everybody that is forceful. Some people are naturally laid back and quiet. If you have that laid back and calm guy that will tell you, sweetheart, just leave them. Don't mind them. As long as I love you, just leave them. A man that cannot shine his eyes and say, you dare not. My sister, he got attack on killing on that marriage, you will suffer because boundaries will be flattened. Fences are non-existent. Fingers will be poked into your eyes because you do not have a backup shielding you. You might never know peace in that marriage. And lastly, a disciplined man with the utmost fear of God. If you do not have a disciplined man, oh my God, <laughs> do you know that a lot of things that men do in their marriages, a lot of wrong things, a lot of trauma that they put their wives through, is because of lack of discipline. It's not like they don't love you. You know, a woman will feel like if you love me, you won't hurt me. A man might feel he loves you, but he will still do those things that will make you cry blood because of what? Lack of discipline. They might bench it on culture. It is tradition. It is culture. It is habit. It is none of that. It is a lack of discipline. And sometimes this indiscipline is checked by the families of this man. Oh yes. When the man is straying, you have a father figure. You have his father on speed dial that you can call and say, Daddy, 
See what Tolu Lokba is doing, you know. See what Aki is doing, you know. See what Theophilus is doing, you know. And Daddy will call him to order like a man and sit him down and say, Don't. You have a husband that wants to make a mistake or is doing something that is not okay. And you have spoken to him, he's not listening. Of course, you cannot report your husband to your own family. That's creating more trouble. Because you might forgive, but they will never forgive and they will never forget. You report the man to his own family, right? So when push comes to shove, because sometimes in marriage, push must come to shove. That pre-wedding lovey lovey might not last 40 years there might be times of trials there might be times of difficulties where you have to involve people that that man respect or look up to yours is empty no family member is available for you to call your husband to order you cannot report anything you stay in silence and you suffer and you swallow the only thing that can make you enjoy that marriage is when you have a disciplined man that has the fear of God because that will be your only protection. You don't have the luxury of having in-laws that would back you up. Look at Mia Duce. Yes, Yul is misbehaving, but look at what his family is doing. They're standing beside her, standing behind her, backing her up. Whatever decision she chooses to make, they are solidly behind her because they love her. Just imagine having a husband that has treated you like that and having in-laws that now hate you on top of it. <laughs> Suicide. But when a man knows that if he tries biting more than he can chew, he will not have the support of his own family because his family love you and have approved of your union with their son. He will be more careful. I'm not saying that it is an automatic ticket that the man will not misbehave, but he will think twice knowing that even his own mother will tell him, You are not serious. You are not doing that to that girl. So when you have this missing, please make sure that you have a man that fears God. A man that is decent and disciplined. A man that has less propensity to bring in drama in your marriage because if drama comes you are on your own so if wofi ever watches this video or my dad and sisters facing this situation in the same predicament these are my humble opinions and points consider them and make the decision that is best for you put it on a scale what you stand to gain versus what you stand to lose most importantly check the man audit the man that you're getting married to is he a stubborn man a firm man that can stand his ground and put his two foot down and protect you or is he uh, uh, uh. <laughs> analyze your own strengths both your physical and spiritual strengths is it a battle that you are willing and able to weather check your family values does extended family relationship mean something to you or does it mean nothing to you weigh your odds and make the best decision for yourself just as i mentioned before if you have this experience if you're in a marriage where you were hated or you are hated or if you're just about getting into one whatever the situation is with you i believe that there is something that we can share even if you're married in a place that you are loved also share your experiences down in the comment section so people can read and learn i wish wofi all the very best so guys yes we have come to the end of today's video if you're new here you're seeing my face for the first time or if you've been watching with Without subscribing don't forget to hit the subscribe button give this video a big thumbs up drop all your comments down in the comment section and stay glued because we have so much more coming your way don't also forget to follow us on our second channel Neze Pepe Rempe where you're going to be experiencing me up close and personally thank you so much guys once again it's me your girl barista Neze and this is Neze Vale I'll see you guys in my next one for now bye <music>